Hello, I am Test Drive, and welcome to episode 57 of Forza Motorsport 2. We're in this episode. I'm finally continuing on with this game. It's been a few months since I've played, uh, and I'm not streaming because I didn't feel like it. So, we're just going to continue on as is and just see how this goes. And uh, we are going to be doing a semi pro race, specifically the, or not race, but races, the Rizzi Competizioni. 600 horsepower invitational and actually I should go back to that we have our restrictions here car type can be race class and power must be under 600 horsepower and the most powerful or the most or the highest pi car we're racing against is the s7 at at 963 i have the perfect car for this that i'm pretty sure was also dlc and uh yeah i, I just have to use it it's nothing other than the 98 Porsche 911 GT1. I'm going to make sure. It shouldn't be under race class. Yeah, yeah. It can't be race class. So it is production. So we should be able to get in with this. Let me change the color. Mm. I'm going to stick with silver. It's kind of boring, but whatever. But this car is 964, so it's literally 1 PI above the S7. So, I'm not too worried about being too OP or not OP enough. So, let's get started. We have Magello, Maple Valley, Laguna Seca, and the infield of Sunset Peninsula. So, let's get started on Magello. Alrighty. We got a S7, a 50. I like how the four GTs in here, even though it's an A class. That's fantastic. Even though in PGR2, Project Gotham Racing 2, uh, the S7, this car, and the, let's see, the GT, I don't think the Enzo, no, the Enzo and stuff is way too powerful, but they were all in the same class. This car has a turbo of some sort. Oh, I am not used to this game. Only racing game I've played recently was Project Gotham Racing 3. So, oh boy. It's going to take a second to uh, get back used to this again. Cars actually have like wheel spin now in this game. And get slightly, you know, they don't just default back to the track. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Also, this car has very strange brake lights, the way they light up. And so yeah, I haven't really decided how I'm going to do this. Uh, I was mentioning in a PGR3 video that I'm not sure if I'm just going to record these and put them up as is, or if I'm going to cut out the parts where I don't really talk that much, which is very possible. Um, I don't know. Which sucks, because I'm always like, oh, I want to see how long games take me overall. Uh, you know, minus loading screens and stuff like that but if I do that then you know this game's gonna be cut in like half probably so I don't know I might just leave it as is uh, if you have any comments on like the spots that I cut out or didn't cut out leave it in the comment section below and we'll just see from there Ugh. Selena 7's put up a fight a draft. Oh, it's so much faster. It's actually not accelerating as fast as I was expecting, but it's still definitely faster than me in a straight line. I keep like overcorrecting myself for some reason in the straightaway. Oh my god, why am I so bad at turning? Come on, Porsche. Porsche. You've got at least one turbo. I'm sure it's probably twin turbos. I actually don't really know much about the specs of the 911 G21 at all. Alright, Selene, I'm passing you. Oh, excuse me. Okay. We're passed. But yeah, I don't really know much about the uh, 911 G21, which is strange because I really like 996s and stuff. And this literally has 996 brake lights and headlights. Even though it came out a year or two before the 996 came out. Also, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the top piece of the brake light that lights up whenever I hit the brakes 
Uh, that's not supposed to be brake light. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be turn signal. I don't know for sure, because obviously I haven't seen one of these in real life, especially with the brake lights or turn signals on. But I'm going to assume that that's correct. I think I mentioned it in the one of the PGR3 videos as well. I do love the 90s race car to road car versions, or road car version of race cars. This is CLK, the TS020. I don't know why I really like those. Couldn't care less about much newer cars, but I do like the 90s ones. All right, this is gonna, it's gonna be make or break right here. Oh, the seven is actually staying behind slightly. I will accept that. Please don't try and pass me. Please don't slam into the back of me. Thank you. I didn't take that turn too wide for once. And now cue me being extremely careful. Making sure not to slide or go too wide. Hey, that rhymed. Very nice. Also, I hope you're excited to see more Forza 2 content. I've been really wanting to play this game. The, I think the main reason I have an itch to play like Forza and Gran Turismo and stuff like that is specifically because I want to use a whole boatload of different cars. That is like the reason I continue and also enjoy playing through games like this. Because they have interesting car lists. Like GT has an interesting car list. This game has an interesting car list. You know, you get further on in the series, Gran Turismo 4, 5, Forza 4. Very, very interesting car list. And I like always using the weird stuff, of course. Even though this isn't incredibly weird. But, it's a DLC car, I'm pretty sure, so... Which I think is the only reason it's not in this race as an AI car. I also can't wait to get to, like, I think it's Forza 3 was the start of having DLC cars actually in races in the career. If I remember right. So we'll get to that eventually where there's actually DLC cars. Not just that I'm driving. And I also don't want this game to take two years for me to play through like it did originally. Actually, I think it took more than two years. I think it took three years if I remember right. Because I am a very consistent Let's Player on YouTube. As you've been able to tell by my month-long hiatus before uploading this, basically. <sighs> I don't know what it is that causes me to, like, just take long hiatuses. Even though that wasn't incredibly long compared to some other people's, like, SSOHPKC. Seamus, he literally didn't upload videos or say anything on the internet for, like, three years, I think it was? And now he's back to playing video games again, which I'm super excited about because I actually thoroughly enjoyed watching his videos. His brand of humor is very good to me. But somebody has, I don't know, I, I've always like been like, oh, I'll just be the, the SSO HPKC or GALM of racing games. Although to be fair, it's between me and Rhino. Speaking of which, has Rhino up uploaded stuff recently? I honestly, I watch a stream sometimes and I don't really get around to watching videos. So I apologize, but I actually don't remember. I know he's been uploading on his second channel. And it's funny because like, I talk to him in voice calls every now and then at least. Because me and him and Thunder are doing the... Uh, me and him, Thunder, RKD, and Zero are all doing a co-commentary on Project Gotham Racing 2 on Thunder's channel, which hopefully I can actually remember to put that in the description this time, because I completely forgot to do it the last time I mentioned it. So, if I don't remember to do it, look up Thunder THR on YouTube, and his channel should show up. And you can see our shenanigans on Project Gotham Racing 2.
And yeah, otherwise, I don't really know what else to say about that. I'm definitely feeling the, the game grind again. Don't know how long it's going to last uh, consistently for. Because I feel like I'm a person. I don't know why I think this way. I don't even know if it's like actually true or not. But I feel as if if I don't use up all my energy that I have towards wanting to play games to actually play and record them, I'm still going to get burnt out in the same amount of time and it'll just be less content posted while I'm not just taking a break. So, I don't know. I could try that. Oh, fuck. This ain't good. Oh, no. I shouldn't have hit the gas there. Son of a bitch. I only have one and a half laps remaining. And I have one and a half, just like one and a quarter. Ah, shit. Gotta pass the Celine. And now I'm gonna just definitely fuck up going off the track. And die because I'm trying to go harder now. Gotta catch that Celine. I may have to make a dumb dive if I can catch up enough to actually do said dive. <sighs> Come on. Why do I always do this to myself? I, it's always like in the last tenth of the race that I screw up on. Don't slide. The grass is sticky, by the way. I'm here at seven. Our head is 1.5 seconds ahead. Come on, S7. Go, can do it. Car behind is 17 seconds behind. Why is the S7 so overpowered? And to be fair, myself as well. Right, because the PI is like super high on these cars compared to everything else. Alright. Here's where something stupid happens. Ugh. Get off the track. I think it's Jay Davis, isn't it? Is that Jay Davis? Yeah, it is. Should have figured with a blue American car. Alright. Just don't screw this last section up. And it'll be okay. I think the difficulty's still on hard, maybe? If I remember right. My nose itches so bad because there's a hair touching it. Okay, we're good. Okay. I think we're good. I'm really glad that didn't end as poorly as it could have. Okay, first race has been done. And I luckily won. Okay. 41 grand. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Now the question is, will I hit level 40 before I run out of events to do? And by running out of events to do, of course. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. I mean, uh. Whatever. I don't even know why I talked during that. Like, there's nothing there. I'm sure I remember, won't remember to cut all that out, but whatever. Uh, I was saying something. Hopefully I can hit level 40 before I run out of events that aren't professional series or endurance series. Because again, if you don't know, my whole plan is to uh, do every event that's not professional endurance and do all the professional and endurance ones in order. Alright, I'm going to... We're going to take a... I just remembered I can actually take a screenshot. Oh, I can't... Oh, yeah. That's why I can't take a screenshot. Let's see. How do I... There we go. I can't just take a... Well, I can take a screenshot of that. That'll work. Okay. Thank you, photo mode. Because there's so much stuff on the screen, and then I was like, why do I why do I save photos if I could just take a screenshot like I did with PGR3? And it's like, oh yeah, that's why. 
Excuse me. Uh, go. I don't like being on the outside here. Okay, we're good. Slow down. Thank you, Davis. Also, another random note to think of, or that I just thought of. I have to decide what my Let's Play is going to be after I finish uploading both Forza? No, not Forza. PGR3 and Half-Life Alex. Because these are all three going to be kind of coexisting for a little bit, because I have, you know, I don't have to record anything for PGR3 now, and I don't have to record anything for Half-Life Alex because I did that months ago, literally. And just now got around to actually uploading it. I think the big thing was I was going to just make a highlights video of Half-Life. And then I ended up not doing that. And just deciding to do a, uh, a full, like, uploading the Let's Play of it. Which I'm excited for because I really like that game. I do need to play through Half-Life 1 and 2 at some point as well. I did play through Half-Life 2 on an old channel. Don't even think that channel exists anymore, so those videos don't exist. Uh, so, good thing is that I'll know how to get through Half-Life 1, at least partially, and Half-Life 2. I should play through Black Mesa, actually. I don't own it, but I could buy it. And it's basically Half-Life 1, but upscaled, and also slightly shorter. I did watch somebody... I actually watched Gollum uh, talking about Let's Players and shit. I uh, watched him for a good majority of the Black Mesa playthrough. But to be fair, just because I was curious about the game, also I like his commentary, and also it's not going to really spoil anything for me besides, you know, the differences in Black Mesa versus Half-Life. So I do kind of know about uh, Black Mesa. But yeah, Half-Life 2, I've never actually played at all, and I've never <coughs> never seen any videos of it. So that one will be exciting. And there's a bunch of other non-racing games I still want to play through. I actually kind of want to play through The, the Last of Us 1. Just because I own it, and I've I played like the first 10 minutes of it. Something like that. And that would be my first PS4 Let's Play if that was, you know, what I did first. I've never actually played through a game on PS4 yet. I've also never done a Let's Play of a PS3 game on this channel. The only one that I can recollect actually doing was Need for Speed The Run back in the day. And speaking of which, if you didn't know, if you, also if you made it this far in the video, uh, su surprisingly, um... I've decided that once I hit a thousand subscribers on this channel, I'm going to start playing through the Need for Speed games. Not sure uh, if I'm going to start with the PS1 era games or the PS2 era games. Like, I could start with, like, Hot Pursuit and then work on my way on, like, High Stakes and then Portion Unleashed and so on and so forth. Uh, or I might just start with Hot Pursuit 2. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll talk more about that once we get closer to that goal. But, going back to the other thing, I'm pretty sure that besides Midnight Club 2, I don't count Midnight Club, or not Midnight Club 2, Midnight Club 1, I played through the PS2 version, which was the only version actually, and uh, I played through it on PS3 because I bought it on there and just downloaded it. Other than those two, I don't think I've ever played through a game on PS3. I tried to play through Gran Turismo 5 at one point, but obviously that didn't last. If you remember the end of my old channel, it just... The channel ended before I got, you know, more than a tenth of the way through that game or something. I would like to do more PS2 games. And I'd love to do more Xbox games, but my Xbox is currently dead. In case you didn't know. Uh, my Burnout 3 Let's Play... Was the last Let's Play I did that? No. 
I know it's struggled sometimes during the Burnout 3 Let's Play to read the discs, but my Project Gotham Racing 2 Let's Play was the last series that will be done on this original Xbox. Unless I decide to do like some random short game that I can just file transfer to it. That isn't bigger than, you know, whatever space is inside the Xbox, which is like 3 gigabytes or something. I guess I could find something. Actually, I know like Ford Racing 2 is like a couple hundred megabytes. Although, I have Ford Racing 2 on PC, yet I haven't gotten, gotten it to work. Uh, but I found out you can get Ford Racing 2 for PC for free because it's abandoned wear. Same with Ford Racing 3, except for the fact that I have Ford Racing 3 on Steam, so that's not a worry to me at all. And then plus, I would still like to play through the Ford Racing games in order. I'm also destroying the S7 in this race, probably because there's less straightaways. I can't really think of anything else that I would actually care to, like, put on my Xbox. That would be a smaller game. Either everything else I have for PS2, or it's something I'm not incredibly interested in playing through. Even though I will let's play through anything, well, just about anything, there are some games that I don't really care to play through at all ever again. Uh... But, I don't know. Leave in the comments if you know a small game for Xbox that I could play through. That isn't A, backwards compatible on the Xbox 360, B, on PS2, or, you know, basically playing it in any, any higher quality than on the original Xbox. <sighs> Last lap. Especially because I actually have the PS2 versions of like super early Need for Speed games for PS2. Like Hot Pursuit 2 and Underground 1 and 2 and actually Most Wanted. I played through Most Wanted on PS2 on stream a while ago. Although I have the much, 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 much better version of Most Wanted 05 in the form of the redo mod on PC. So I don't really need to worry about that for PS2. I may be a bit of a purist, but like with stuff like that, all the events are the same. It's just more different cars. It's kind of like a Test Drive Unlimited Platinum. It's still the same events, but it's, you know, it has 10 times the amount of cars that it had originally. So that's basically why I plan to play through both of those mods. But other games, I'm like, oh, I want to play this vanilla or whatever. Damn it! Why did I do that at the very end? Damn it, I got damage. Damn it, damage. I'm upset about that. Anyways, let's continue. Oh, it didn't even give me a damage penalty. Okay. Thank you, game. Ooh, we're almost level 39. And we'll continue on to the next after this. Now I have a 40% discount on drive transmission and driveline. Nice. Let's continue on to the next race. Okay, let's start with this third out of fourth race at Laguna Seca. That L S7 is so fast off the line. It's kind of annoying. I think this car definitely has a, a, uh, the, the handling advantage though. It just has, the S7 just has the, uh, oh god, straight line. Sorry, bud. I was trying to dive and then you turned suddenly. This is all your fault, obviously. Not my fault at all. I will not take the blame for that. Got so much different playing this game from PGR3, specifically because 
the car models in this game are a lot higher quality than PGR3s. And, uh, oh, oh, Davis is dead. <gasps> Might have just actually came back on the track and smashed into somebody as well. It's very possible the, the uh, Forza 2 AI does the, do that sometimes. I didn't even fuck him up that time. All right. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Handling advantage. No, car models. Yeah, it's so much different playing this from Forza or from PGR3 just because of that. Like, not that the models in PGR3 are like low quality per se, but just the level of detail in this game. Like, cars actually have 3D lights and uh, the proportions are usually pretty much spot on. Eh, yeah, questionable with some cars, but still. It's just, I don't know, it's just a lot different. I think, I think Davis actually survived that without crashing into anybody. Because I don't see a car like way back anywhere. Is he in last place? Yes! And Esposito is in second to last. Got Esposito. Oh boy, when we get to Forza 3 and 4, Esposito sure does like to wreck everything. As you will see in the future at some point. I got pretty much smooth sailing to the finish now. I'm sure Davis will find his way around the AI cars at some point, but it'll take him a little bit. And I'm pretty sure the other cars are just, you know, not nearly as fast as this car, which is nice. Third lap. Hmm, okay. It's Taylor that's trying to keep up with me in the competition coop. Good luck, bud. God, I just looked and noticed the uh, the license plate bracket on the back of this car is incredibly ugly. Right in between the exhaust there. Also, I just noticed the exhaust in this car looks almost identical to the exhaust on the Carrera GT. I find that interesting. Because this car was like seven years before the Carrera GT. I think this car came out for 98. Maybe? 97, 98? I don't know. God, there's so much brake light that lights up. I can't get over that fact. I still have the turn signals lighting up as brake lights too. I don't know why I keep looking back. There's nobody behind me to see. I mean, I can see him from a distance, but it's a very far distance. I was just thinking, isn't this... I think this track has changed names recently. It's not Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca anymore. It's something else. I don't remember. I just remember it changed. Which I find interesting. Because it stayed Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for a long time. And that's why everybody was so, so surprised to see that it changed. So let's change the topic over to a different game series that is a competitor to this game series, which is Gran Turismo 
And how about that Gran Turismo 7 reveal? I haven't really talked about it in a video because it happened when I was on, in the middle of my break. And uh, I haven't. I don't think I talked about it in any of the PGR3 videos. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that specifically because of the used car dealership. That is like the main reason I'm actually like, oh my god, I might have a bu have to buy a PS4, PS5, not 4, for Gran Turismo 7. And like, of course, it looks incredibly pretty and the menus are nice and whatever, but man, that used car dealership, I am into it. Absolutely. No contest, my favorite feature out of any Gran Turismo game is the used car dealership. Especially in like GT3 and up. Actually, I don't think GT3 had one. But maybe didn't. I don't know. Um, at least in GT4 and 5. Because, you know, you could see how many miles were put on the car and whatever. Which is just super cool to me. And I'm curious to see if it'll be like the other games where it's just like, you know, it'll just be the car with whatever amount of mileage on it and needs an oil change or whatever. Or if they might actually like scuff it up a little bit or something, make it dirty or something in GT7. That'd be kind of a cool little feature. And I don't, I wouldn't put it past Polyphony Digital to do something like that. Just because of all the little other little things they've done in their games in the past. I'm also intrigued to see how many cars are in Gran Turismo 7. I'm also curious if it's going to be a launch title or not. Can't really tell from now because they haven't released a specific release date yet. And who knows, you know, if it's early development or whatever. But I'm excited to see more info on it. Watch it be like another GT5 where it's supposed to come out with the PS3, 4, whatever. And uh, I don't think GT5 was supposed to come out with the PS3. But it was not supposed to come out in 2010. It was supposed to be much earlier than that, I'm pretty sure. Because <laughs> they teased it for years, especially with, you know, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue and whatever. But yeah, I'm just curious. Also, what are your thoughts on GT7 so far? Because, I mean, I did like... I have liked every Gran Turismo game that's been made, so... At least I've played a decent amount, which the only game that does that doesn't really include is GT3 because I've barely played any, G any GT3. I know I'm a sinner, but whatever. I just never had a PS2 as a kid, and I was more intrigued by playing GT4 whenever I did get PS2-related stuff. Someday I'll play through the entirety of GT3. Today is not that day, though. In other words, or in other news, we're almost done with this race. Which is pretty neat. Is Davis back up to second yet? Davis is in fourth, all right. Struggling. Can't blame me though. I mean, you can blame me for the first time that I passed you, or the whenever I originally passed, but that was nothing to do with me. I take no blame in this. I just realized also this car does not have a third brake light at all, I'm pretty sure. At least in this game it doesn't. Who knows if it does in real life or in other games, but couldn't tell you. I didn't finish PGR2 on Platinum, so I don't, I don't think I unlocked this car. And that's like the only other game that I know of this car being in. Besides maybe newer Forza games, like Forza 4 or 3? I don't know. I don't think I ever used it in those games. If it was in there.
Just got the idea. I think I kind of want to just randomly look up videos of the 911 GT1 racing back in its heyday. I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm going to assume that there's videos of it on YouTube, but I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I'm also curious of how long I've been recording for because I haven't been paying attention to anything for the entire time I've been recording this. Besides the fact that I looked at Google Chrome once in between races, and that's it. And we are just about done with this race. I think I'm going to hit... I might hit level 39 in this episode, actually. I'm curious. Let's see. I can't wait until I hit level 40 and I get an achievement. It'll be great. Damn it, I got credits taken off. Hell yeah, level 39. 260k. Yeah, we'll definitely be at level 40 by the time that we're at the professional stuff. Although, I'm not sure if I'll be at level 50. Because <laughs> I need to be level 50 to get access to a couple of those vents. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, we have this shit to do. Sunset Peninsula. Alrighty, final race. And I just looked and we are at 38 minutes of recording. Surprisingly, I've been able to actually talk through all this. <laughs> well, most of it. There has been a few little dead spots, but... I'm proud of myself. Watch this be the race where I, like, just don't talk at all. I think, actually, in the, the previous episode with the Lamborghini, I, uh, I just neglected talking for the entirety of, like, one race. One entire race. Yeah. I think I was just in a terrible mood whenever I did that, too, so... Definitely did not help. At all. Make the turn. We got seven laps on here. Curious of how many miles I've put in this car too. It's probably a decent amount. Considering I've been driving for 40 minutes. Well, not specifically driving for 40 minutes, but you know, when the episodes start to get to 40 minutes to an hour long. Putting a lot of miles on cars. And by a lot, I mean like 80, 90 maybe? I don't know. We'll see. I'll look at it after I'm done with this. Hopefully, if I remember. I'll probably uh, space out and completely forget between now and then, but whatever. Not my fault. It is my fault, but I'm going to say it's not my fault. This car does have a 6 here. I was wondering about that. I never actually used it yet, even on the Strait of Magello. I'm super excited to start using slower cars in this game again here in the nearish future. And by nearish, I mean like once I start the professional series, I'll be back to D class cars. Yeah, I'm actually curious now. I'm, I'm not sure. Because I have a few events. Oh, I have this event. And I have a few events that I can access in uh, whatever the other one is. The, the One Make series. And also regional championships. I just remembered I have a few events in that too. I might reach level 50 before I run out of stuff to do. But I can't guarantee it. Considering we are at almost level 40 now. And the last 10 levels will be the absolute longest to achieve, of course. Also, I don't know. I, I think... The last event in this series is unlocked with level 40. And I think the last ones for the other ones might be level 45. But they might be level 52. I don't remember. <laughs> it's been so long since I've played through the end of this game. Damn, this car goes faster in 5th than it does in 6th here. What the hell's up with that? 
This is the problem with me let's playing games the way I do, and especially wanting to play through like Gran Turismo games and stuff. It's super inconsistent with like leveling up and what events you get to do. Like PGR3 was great because I just, you know, picked an event, won it, went to the next event, won it, whatever, finished it that way. But uh, in games like this where you have a bunch of different options, options hurt. Your Gran Turismo is even worse because there's, especially in like GT2, to do all of the events in one series or in like one, uh, one, all the races in one event. There we go. You have to have a car with, you know, that's under 160 horsepower. And you have one that's under 280 horsepower. And the other one's under 360 horsepower or something. So you have to keep, like, upgrading your car. And you have to keep paying attention to, basically, you know, what you're going to have to do to complete all of those races within one quote-unquote episode of gameplay. Being a Let's Player is hard. I'm going to cry. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna bitch about that too much, cause that's my problem to figure out. Not, not the games, not the viewers. That's my problem. So don't worry, it'll happen, and I'll figure it out some way. I don't know how. I have not played through enough of Gran Turismo games besides like five and six to really know. Oh shit, we're good. Davis is deciding to be somewhat close to me. And I'm not a fan of that, I'm not gonna lie. He can screw right off. I keep saying he. I need to be more inclusive. They need to fuck right off. There we go. I don't know. Because obviously I'll know Rossi is a she, so... I don't know. My brain turns to mush if I think about that too much. Because not, not only am I thinking about it with other people, I'm thinking about it with myself. And I still fuck it up all the time. And, yeah, I don't know. My brain is just like, hmm, this doesn't seem right. But I'm like, it is right, brain. Guess what? You're stupid. I say that to myself a lot. I talk shit about myself at all times. Because self-deprecating humor is funny, right? It's time to stop with that. That is not the tangent I want to go off on right now. How about car? I think I've I've said all there needs to be said about car. I am kind of sad that we have to wait until Forza 3 to have an interior view camera in these episodes, but whatever. Like I said, I think it might have been technical lim limitations. Because a lot of the cars do have modeled interiors, as people have found out in the past. Uh, they're not, like, perfectly modeled, but they're, you know, they're pretty well done on various cars. Uh, but I just don't, I think it was, there was, like, technical limitations and also time limitations, probably, that stopped them from putting uh, interior view in the cars in this game. Because, I mean, to be fair... I'd rather have a polished product that took longer than, you know, like a crappy interior view that didn't look good or, you know, didn't have working uh, instruments or something like that. So I think they, they did the right thing in omitting it from this game. Which, of course, they could have pushed the development of the game itself, but I don't think it was that necessary. It's not like a game-breaking feature or anything. It's not like... I'm going to cry because there's no interior view in this game. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on it, at least. Because while you you can say Gran Turismo 5 Prologue had interior view, and PGR 3 had interior view, and whatever other games that came out before this game had interior view, 
But in reality, it doesn't really matter. Plus, this game had 350 cars in the end, I think. Something like that. That's a lot of cars. That's a lot of interiors. Which is why I think, like I said, they were working on it through this game. But they omitted it just because they didn't have the time to complete it. But in Forza 3, they had the ability to just take a bunch of models from this game, slap an interior into them, and go on from there. Because I think there was also a huge jump in quality of models between Forza 1 and this game. But they didn't need to do that between this game and Forza 3 because all the models, at least like the exteriors of the cars, are really you know nice to look at anyways. They're, as I said, they're well detailed. So I think that's why we were able to get it in Forza 3 but not in Forza 2. Plus with this game they might have been able to actually hire more people and stuff to work on it as well. Between this game and Forza 3. Because this game did sell really well. If I remember if I remember right. I think the best selling Forza game that's not a Horizon game is still Forza Motorsport 4. If I remember right. But I think, I don't know. Plus, it was on the Xbox 360. It was the first game on the Xbox 360 from Turn 10. Probably had to work around all the new technology and whatnot as well. So, Davis, fuck off. Stop getting closer to me. You're not going to catch me before the end. You, I hope you know that. Because you got to look at it. Like, a lot of the, the games that had... Interior views before this had a very small car list. And so on and so forth. So, I don't know. We're just about to finish this race, though. And we're about to finish the first episode back in this game in, like, two or three months. Which is nice. It's a good feeling to actually be back into this, because, as I mentioned, I don't want this game to take three years to complete this time. So... I'm going to do my darn diddly best to keep it at least somewhat consistent. There's not going to be an episode every day, probably. But whenever I get to the, the time and the feeling to actually be like, I'm going to race around in circles for an hour, then I'll play this game for one episode per day, probably. Oh, I get more car ready because I, my level went up, I'm pretty sure. I think that's the thing that happens in this game. And there we go. Reputation level 4, 30% tire discount. And... That will conclude this after we, uh, you know, view my car that I just won. We got the, ooh, we got a race car, MC12. Very nice. And we got 48,000 credits for completing it. God, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm getting like 300,000 credits. This ain't PGR3. At the end of the game, I might be getting that much at bonus, but not, not here at all. So there's a car we won, so on and so forth. And that will complete all I can do in the uh, semi-pro for now. We do have one more event to do in there, which I believe, like I said, is level 40. Yes. And we'll see. Let me let me look at this. Rivalry face-offs. Forgot about this one. Yep, that's level 40, so I'll be able to complete all of those after one, one or two more events. And we have level 40 and 45. And then factory spec. Do we have a level 50 race in factory spec? No. Okay. Cool. So we are going to be able to probably get all this done. Sounds good. And since I remembered, we are going to look at how many miles I drove this car. I get history. I drove for 73 miles. Not too shabby. I got exactly 43 minutes and two seconds that I drove somehow. Anyways, that will conclude this episode of Forza 2. Thank you all so much for watching, and I shall see you all in the next one.